ladies and gentlemen, would you put your hands together for Julie Gishoro? <laughs> when you ask who Julie is, yeah. Julie is a tomboy. Are you serious? She's a serious. So if the boy could climb the tree, I had to climb higher. Oh you know? my! I, that, that was that was the way it was. <laughs> so I tell people my shags was where. Dagoretti. No, Dagoretti is Dago is Nairobi. Yeah. I'm like, no, you don't understand. Yeah. Ladies, ladies, ladies. I know a God that fulfills purpose. I know a God. You are all invited to the Daughters of Zion meeting to be held on Saturday, the 29th of June 2013, hosted by Reverend Kathy Q. God is not moved by crowd, He's moved by individual. Ah, there is a personal God that we need to know, like David. I don't care if you think I'm late. I know a God who never delays. I know a God who never discourages. Purpose to attend. Daughters of Zion, raising the standard among women. Good evening, viewers. You're welcome to Woman Without Limits. In case you didn't know, that's exactly who you are. And I always say this, and I know it may sound like a broken record, but it's okay, just use it. <laughs> Unless you stop yourself, nobody can stop you. There is no devil in hell, no human being, no parent, no sibling, no cousin, no friend, no relative, nobody can stop you but you yourself. So you always need to get out of your own way and know there are no limits with God. There are no impossibilities with God. In fact, he uses the rejects. He uses things that even you cannot see the possibility of it. He uses that so that all the glory goes back to him. And you're watching Woman Without Limits. We always bring you some interesting stuff and you love it. And so I want you to invite even your neighbors right now because I tell you today, we are going to have some hot moment in this place. We have a guest, a wonderful guest, and we've always been wondering, okay, where does she come from and how is she this beautiful and what do you mean? And, <laughs> and today we have an awesome time because you know what? She's going to be right here with us and tell us how she climbed up those ladders and how she became who she is today. Ladies and gentlemen, would you put your hands together for Julie Geshoro? <laughs> Wow, it's so lovely to see you. Thank you for having me. And you look so beautiful, oh my God. Thank you. Are you serious right now? <laughs> you should have taken me to do hair like that. Look at yours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So Julie, it's lovely to see you looking as good as ever. And you know what? Um, I know Kenya, not just these beautiful people here and those that are watching us by television, but really Kenya has come to love you and to know you real good. And you do such a marvelous job. I mean, wherever, wherever you go, whenever you're behind the cameras, you're like, oh, my Lord. You just take it home, you know. <laughs> Thank you. I in, always say it's the grace of God. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Yes. You know what? We can Thank all you. see that and we can all see, you know, the, the, the beauty, the glamour. But today, we first want to know who is Julie Gishoro. People keep asking me, she kikuyu, okay, Gishoro, Gishoro is, uh, seems kikuyu, but uh, it sounds kikuyu. <laughs> That's very and, Kenyan. In I know. Tanzania, they say, don't, don't ask I'm those questions. <laughs> yeah, yes. But yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So people ask who's Julie, mm -hmm. and then uh, today we just want to hear who Julie is, really. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Julie, I love to describe myself first and foremost to yeah. anybody who asks as a child of God. Whoa! Oh, wow. So, wow. 
Yeah. Before, yeah. before I even continue, yeah. I am a child of God. Yeah. And you know, people have joked on the internet and said, we know who owns Kenya, but who owns Julie Gishuru? And oh. I always say, thank you for asking. Yeah. I am 100% owned wow. by God. Oh, my yes. God. Oh, that's awesome. That is I, awesome. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And yeah. I love him and I have loved him since I can remember. Um, and that's that's essentially who I am inside. Yeah. So who is Julie Gishru in terms of heritage? Yes. Um, my mother is uh, Kikuyu. Uh-huh. Uh, her family name was Kibui. Her father okay. was uh, moved from various places during colonial times. So uh -huh. he was displaced several times but ended up in Dagoretti. So I tell people my shags was where? Dagoretti. No, Dagoretti is Dago is Nairobi. Yeah. I'm like, no, you don't understand. Yeah. Uh, Shambani, he had his cows there back in the day. In Dagoretti. You know, we had the farm there. Yeah. So my mom grew up in Dagoretti. Mm. My dad, it's a very interesting story. His yeah. father was from a place called Kashmir, which is between India and Pakistan. Okay. And there was a terrible split um, and, and a very severe civil war okay. emerged uh, before and, and after the split. I mean, you continue to hear about conflict yeah. in Kashmir today. So his family ended up in Pakistan. They were Muslims. Mm -hmm. And his, his father put his family on a boat and they ended up on the east coast of Africa. He was the navigator of the boat. And my grandfather built a lot of the very old constructions you'll see in Lavington, Isli. So that's what he came to Kenya and ended up doing. Yeah. So my father is a young Asian man mm -hmm. who happened to meet this young African woman. Yes. And fell head over heels oh. in love. Yeah, mom. Yes. See, you know, I keep telling daughters of Zion, <laughs> your man can come from anywhere. You never know. If this you, one can come from India. You never you know. know. Yeah, you know. She yeah. was the good girl in the family and went and told her father, I've met a man, I want to get married. He yeah. said he has to come and see me. Wow. So this Asian man is nervous about... Just going to this Kikuyu man and saying, I want to marry your daughter. Yeah. So he sends his friend. Um, and his friend has to have a little bit of courage. So his friend had a drink or two. My dad, by the way, has never drunk in his life. So I think wow. he was plying him to yeah. try and give him the courage to go and do this <laughs> yeah. for him. Went uh, down the hill to my grandfather's house because on one year road, there was a steep hill. Yeah. And my grandfather looks at this drunk man and thinks, Maggie? Is this the man that you're bringing? He comes yeah. here drunk. And my mother says, no, it's the man at the top of the hill. Yeah. And when my grandfather looks up and sees an Asian man, he's even more shocked. <laughs> I'd prefer, you know, maybe it would be easier maybe for me this to one do with a drunkard, you know. So, um, so it was very interesting that that's wow. how it all started. Yeah. My father and grandfather became so close that my father bought the plot next to my grandfather's house. What? And I grew up living next to my mother's parents. I grew up in a very extended family environment. Mm, yeah. Um, my father said, bring them up in the Christian church. Your, and we your were. Your Indian father. My Asian father, yes. My Muslim father. And so we were brought up in the Lord. And um, he's wow. just, my parents, I'm blessed and I'm thankful for a oh. mixed heritage, which I think makes me understand a lot mm. of the challenges that we have in terms of tolerance. Mm. I think it's, you know, I, I grew up in an environment where there was no issue with being different colors. Okay. But issues came from outside, not within. Whoa. So I've always understood that we can appreciate each other. Yeah. We have to get rid of the negative elements mm. that mm. push us apart. Yeah. Yes. Okay, now you, you being uh, basically almost white, <laughs> no. If you may, <laughs> in color. You see, what happens is, I know that when you grow up in a place where every child is black, mm -hmm. okay, there is that, uh, is it intimidation or, or just lack of understanding? Perhaps in school, did you go through that ever? I, I did. I have a blog where I've written a story about something that happened to me when I was attacked by some young boys. Yeah. Uh, who, you know, calling me Mudogo Mudogo. Yeah, that's actually, what I'm saying. That's yes. what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I was actually uh, hit by a stone and nearly ended up stoned, but I ran away. I, I, you know, yes, I did grow up with that. What I try to tell people yeah. that we need to be aware of yeah. 
is we tend to see white on black racism as racism, but we don't recognize our own black on white racism. And I say our own mm. because I consider myself black. Yes. You know, when you tell me my skin is light, mm. it, mentally I have to process it. Yeah. Okay. Because as far as I'm concerned, yeah. I'm African. Yes. And I look no different from any other uh -huh. African. So it takes processing. But, you know, we do also do the same thing. We discriminate, but in our own ways. And um, understanding that, for me, I forgive and move on. Mm. It's not something I hold on to. Yeah. I think we also understand with different conditioning, okay. you believe different things. Yeah. So you have to start from what does one believe okay. and break it down. Yeah. Um, so, yes, I have experienced that. But I think, again, it, it enriches everything you go through, Kathy. Mm. just enriches you yeah. and makes you understand even it's deeper true. It's uh, true. the challenges, I guess. They, they say whatever doesn't kill you empowers you. <laughs> Makes you stronger, you know, if it didn't kill you. So, so of course, you went through that, and then now you grew up fine. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And you had a, how many siblings? Yes, uh, I had siblings. I have siblings. Yeah. So I have an elder brother. Okay. And I have three younger brothers. Um, sadly, many, many years later, my parents divorced and my father remarried. So I have mm. a half-sister, okay. much younger than me. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, for me... Growing up among boys is, it's not easy. Huh? Yeah. So <laughs> when you ask again, when you ask who Julie is, yeah. Julie is a tomboy. Are you serious? She's a serious. So if the boy could climb the tree, if my cousin, and I had a lot, lot of boy cousins. Yeah. The, the girl cousins I had, the females were much older than me. Okay. So I was with the boys. Yes. So if you could climb the tree and I was to be accepted, I had to climb higher. You oh know, I, that, that, was, that was the way it was. <laughs> you so, look like nothing like a tomboy. Oh, I'm an absolute tomboy. So if you see me in my home environment, I don't <laughs> wear shoes. You know, for me, if you ask me the pleasures in life, yeah. it's, it's walking on mud barefoot. You know oh the feeling goodness. you get when your feet set <laughs> in? And yes, yeah, so I'm an absolute tomboy. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing that shows, nothing gives you, gives way to that. That's not a yeah. bad thing. Let me yeah. look like a lady, yeah. but I can't talk Nothing but gives you part, away. Oh part, of, my God. part of who I am, mm. and, and I think maybe the important thing about that is as, as you go into career, mm. there's some people who are very aware of gender issues okay. and gender challenges, mm. but I've never been aware of them. I kind of just believe if you do what you do and you do it well, yes. you will It doesn't be matter whether you're a woman girl, or a man. Yeah. And yes, there are challenges. I'm not saying they don't exist. Yes. But if you focus on them, they will limit you. Exactly. So all you do is do what you do yes. and do it And well. do it right. Right. So you grew up in that environment, became a tomboy and da 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 da. And then now, after that, you finished with school. Mm -hmm. You overcame all those challenges of Kamudogo. <laughs> <laughs> You know, then, then I went to the UK, and, and yeah. in the UK, I'm black. Yeah. So then you get, uh, you get the black racism, wow. you know. So yes, but yes, wow. got through all that. Wow, mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. You know, it, it's so amazing that you would say that in the UK now you turned black. Yes, in the Suddenly UK. you're wondering, okay, where did the Kamodo go? Yeah, it, it, it happens so much. And I think this thing of, of uh, tribalism or color, if you may, it's really not just a Kenyan thing. It's all over the world. Because even in South Africa, when I meet with colored South Africans, they say that the, the, the white South Africans look down on them mm -hmm. and the coloreds look down on the blacks. I, I, so it's, it's everywhere. And in fact, in the U.S. Yeah. is where I find the race issue most pronounced. Exactly. And in fact, not just race. I mean, it boils down to whether you're Italian-American, yeah. Irish-American. So even all those, you know, and we think the U.S. is this... Amazing land, glamorous, yeah. But it's a problem that we are all dealing with. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now you're grown. You've overcome all those, uh, all those uh, things and all. How did you now go to the UK and for what? Right. Um, so after form four, yeah, because I did form four, I, I sat down and looked at my options. And it's very interesting. My my father has always given me a lot of independence. Okay. And an ability to decide. So I went to a convent, Loreto Convent Musangari, for most of my school life. Mm -hmm. And in Form 2, I went home and said, Dad, I'm not focusing enough on my schoolwork. I'm taking part in all the plays. I was a playwright. I was an actor. I was a poet. And, and I, could get away with, I could get away with not being very good in class mm. if I was doing very well in other areas. Uh -huh. So I was always doing, I was not good at sports, but I would take part. So I'd always get kudos yeah. for doing those things. Okay. So I, I said to my dad, no, this is not, uh, I, I need to cha change this environment. Yeah. And I had chosen a boarding school 
and I had chosen a mixed boarding school Okay. under the GCE system. Mm -hmm. And I explained to him, I want to be in a mixed boarding school because I think it's good to compete with boys. Mm -hmm. I don't actually think it's healthy for me to, to be around girls. Alone. girls. Yeah. And also, I think I'll study more and I want to go to GCE because I feel like I'm cramming, I'm not learning. Wow. And, and I put my argument to him and, and the next day he comes to me and says, I've set up an interview for you. Now, this was a pretty expensive school, and I, I realized that they're sacrificing very, very much. Whoa. And I looked at my father, and I knew, and my mom, when they made the decision, yeah. and I knew what they were investing mm. in me, and I think that stayed in my mind. Yeah. So I went to that boarding school. So after Form 4, mm -hmm. again, the responsibility of what they had invested in me was heavy on my shoulders. Okay. And I had to make a very clear decision about what I did next. You know what I love, even as you go on, eh? You know what I love? The fact that you realized they sacrificed a lot. Mm -hmm. to, many kids don't. Many kids think it's a right. So you take them to very expensive schools, mm -hmm. but they think, well, th this is the way it should be. But I love that. The fact that you realized they were sacrificing a lot and you wanted to, it was, to work it. Yes, it was mm. such an expression of confidence and belief in me mm. that it was something that I didn't take what, lightly. lightly yeah. You know? So... Out of Form 4, I looked at my options. I could stay and go to college locally. At that time, uh, under the uh, Moi regime, mm. university was closing. Every few months, there were demonstrations. Yeah. I don't know who remembers. Yeah. So I had some friends who, instead of doing three years in university, were six years down yes, the line, yeah, yeah. waiting to finish you their degree. You wasted some, yeah. So mm. um, I, I put the options before them, and I said, you know, I'd love to go do... My father's dream was for me to do law. It was also okay. my passion. Um, I said, I'd love to go to the UK, and I gave them the options of university. Why the UK? I'll do three years, finish, and, and be home. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, we, we actually, I had to do a pre-university course, which was a year, yeah. which I went and did. And then I went into university, studied law. Wow. Uh, came out of law and yeah. asked myself very many questions. Mm. I think for young people who are in university now, it's, it's a scary time when you're nearly finishing your degree. Mm. And you're asking yourself, will I get a job? What next? Yeah. Am I ready? Yeah. You know, am I prepared for the world out there? Or even for people who finished high school. Yeah. And this is the challenge that you now face. Mm. What next? Yeah, what exactly. next? Exactly. Yeah. So I decided to work for a year to save up money because I wanted to do a master's. Mm -hmm. And my parents again gave me some but they couldn't afford now to pay for the whole masses, and I didn't expect them to. Okay. I mean, for me, this was now overextending. Yeah. So I worked for a year and did my masters. Even during my masters, I was working. Uh, again, on the blog, there's a story about the factory where I worked. I used to work from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. twice a week in a factory, packing pancakes, standing, packing what? pancakes, just packing, what? packing, packing pancakes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, so nothing good comes easy, really. It doesn't. It yeah. doesn't. You've got to sweat. And yeah. if you don't sweat, mm. how do you appreciate what you get thereafter? You yeah. Know? You don't appreciate yeah. it. So, yeah, yeah. It, was a long, it was a long journey, but I got an MBA. Mm -hmm. So I came back to Kenya, law degree and MBA. I said, what next? Daughters of Zion. <laughs> 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 and I see sons of Abraham also are here. <laughs> Eh? You see, Oblongata Mendula has to be used. Eh? <laughs> it, it must be. You, and I always yeah. say for girls especially, mm. yeah. push as far as you can your education. Mm. You know, knowledge is so important. It's power. And, and if you're living in a society where mm. traditionally it's mm. harder for the girl, then just get that education. Do you know, it's amazing because even the word of God tells us, if you lack knowledge, he will, or can you imagine, even God himself will, will, will reject you. That's what the Bible says. Yeah, people perish for lack of knowledge. And if you do not follow after knowledge, mm. I will also reject you. Mm. That's what the Bible says. So you can imagine, even God doesn't want dunderheads, <laughs> <laughs> you know, rep rep representing him. Okay. He also wants, you know, some people with, uh, with uh, some, you know, some stuff, not just yeah. a beautiful head. Yes. <laughs> leave, leave the ignorance behind. Yes, yes. 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 So. Okay, so you worked hard, you got your MBA, you got your uh, whatever and, and came back home. Yes. So uh -huh. I came back home. That's when my parents had divorced. My mother had moved to America. My father had remarried. I didn't wow. feel I had a home. 
I didn't know where do you go, you know, I, where is my home? Yeah. Um, and I, I came back and so I went to my grandmother in Dagoretti where I grew up. Yeah. And, you know. Meanwhile, you're just a young teenager. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I'm 22. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, around about. Yeah. Uh, so a little bit older. Yeah. And I spent some months with my grandmother and mm. I always... I tell young girls, mm. if you can take a month or two, if you can't take more time than that, and go and live with your grandmother, mommy not there, just you and your grandmother, please do it, because I cherish wow. the days that I had with her. Really? Yes, and I'm going to cry. Oh. I cherish oh. them. Because of what she taught you? Because of what she taught me and who she was. Mm. And in a sense, you know, if you think of your grandmother, she's your mother number one. Yeah. You know, I, I was named after her. And, you know, a very loving mother, great family environment, mm. grew up next to them. But now actually have the time to sit with her. Mm. And, you know, their traditional way of thinking was so in conflict with my modern, my norms. And, and, but just to listen to her and not argue with Nyanya. Or show, show, as you I listen. Her. Yeah. Just listen. Yeah. And 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 understand. Yeah. And as your life goes on, mm. the things she says to you keep coming back. And you say, Oh my gosh, she told me that. Oh my. You know, it's so amazing. Yeah. So I really would encourage in a world where we are moving so fast. And forgetting our shards, yes. forgetting our grandparents, and not even wanting to be associated with them because we are classic. It's, it's, you know, it's so wrong. Yeah, it's it so is wrong. so wrong. It's really not of God at all. The, the knowledge uh -huh. you get from them yeah. uh, is, is, so we were together. It was tough. Mm. She, my grandfather had a small pension mm. he had left behind. Mm. I wasn't working. Yeah. So I, I immediately said, I can't do the bar because the bar is one year of not working. Yeah. Literally. Okay. You're not getting paid. Yeah. So I said, I need a job. I'm here with Shosho. Yeah. I'm just going to go to a TV station. I think I can do this. Yeah, I think I can. Just like that, I Julie. I can do this. I can write. Yeah, I can write. I'm a lawyer. I was taught how to articulate issues. Yes. Surely, what's the difference between articulating in a court and presenting? Yeah, on TV. And, and I can do stories. And I, so I went and I did a screen test and they called me and asked me to start immediately. At Are you KTN? Serious? Yeah, just like that. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's what happened. Wow. So you said you're not going to just sit back and watch your grandma. You're going to work and at least be able I'm to help her. I have to find some money. Yeah. I have to find some money. Yeah. So we were there together. And, and this is interesting. When I was taken in by KT and they told me the reason why we want you, yeah. we are desperate for good business reporters yeah. and legal reporting. We have nobody to advise us on Whoa, legal, legal matters. Reporting. So yeah. my education yeah. Had really oh, it yeah. had kicked into so play. It's not about how you look, yeah, on the screen, or it's not about you know how you speak. It's not just those issues. It's what added value oh. are you bringing also? To the you table? know, when you say it's not just just about how you look, many people think yeah. that the look is <laughs> look is number one. It's important. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's important, but not it's everything. But it's certainly so you have to have looks and brains. <laughs> you have to have the looks and the brains. Right. Wow. So they took you in. You worked there. You were still with your grandma. I started there, still yeah. with my grandma. Mm -hmm. And then Capital called me very soon. So I was interning at KTN, yeah. barely earning anything. Mm. Capital called me and offered me a salary. And yeah. I told KTN, I'm really sorry. Yeah. If you can't match the salary, I have to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, literally, I can't explain to you, this is about food on the table. There yeah. was a day Shosho and I had nothing to eat that day and we had no money. So we're sitting there thinking, and I'm trying to figure out where can I get money to buy some tomatoes. I just need a few tomatoes, a little bit of cabbage. And, you know, we had a bit of rice or gali in the house. So I just needed to get something for the... And then some family friends came with a basket of food. Now you want us to cry. <laughs> Imagine, <laughs> please cry. <laughs> and some family friends came with a basket of food. And oh. Shosho, and, and the basket had tea, bread, you know, vegetables. Uh, amen. An answer you know? amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh no. An answered so, prayer. Imagine. So that's oh. where that's where we were. Yeah. And but but you know, even that was fun. Yeah. So, so what are we gonna do today, you know? Yeah. So my 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 advice to young people is yeah. don't think that success comes like this. Yeah. You must have difficult oh, days. Oh my god. Yeah. And even when you look at the Bible, you know, I love to look at biblical figures as yes. mentors. Yeah. 
And you look at the story of Moses. Yeah. You look at the story of Joseph. Mm -hmm. You look at Daniel. And you look at the trials and tribulations oh my God. that they faced. Many in their give life. up. Many would give up. Quote away. I mean. But ridiculous. they stood firm yeah. and, and had their principles and said somehow, mm. even if I'm hungry, and this is important for young girls to know, yeah. Yeah. being hungry is far better than some of the other options that are out there. Wow. Oh, my. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because there are other options that people are running to. The easier options. Unfortunate But they mess options. you up. Oh. They kill you. They, they really, you're, you're killing yourself. They do. And also, it's like there's just no dignity at all. Mm. Some of those options, just, it's like you've lost your dignity completely. They kill your soul. So, so what you're telling a young girl that's watching us today is that it's better you work with your hands. Mm. It's better to look for something to do. I, I have met girls in university who mm. told me that, uh, that they were taxi drivers. Yeah. Actually, I was being driven in a taxi by a girl. Yeah. So I asked, oh, so how did you start this? She said, actually, I'm a university student. But I needed some extra money, so I do a few hours of driving taxis. I'm like, good on you. Yeah. That's so much better than some wow. of the other things. Yeah. Go into a fish and chips shop and sell fish and chips. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Go into a factory, work in a factory, Jeez, but do not do work yeah. that reduces your mm -hmm. dignity mm -hmm. and sells your soul. Oh, come Just on. Just don't do it. Come on. Yeah. And makes you as a girl look so bad. Yeah. Oh, isn't that awesome? There are always options. Uh -huh. When you're a young single girl, yeah. there are options. When you're married, there are options. Yes. As a woman, you must decide what kind of woman you want to be. Hey. That, we, can, that, we cannot pass. That's, that's it. it. That's, that's it. what we are talking about. Who are you? Yeah. So now here you are with your grandmother, mm -hmm. and what are some of the things that you are experiencing with her? You know, with, with my grandmother, some of the precious moments that yeah. you always hold on to. I remember she was diabetic and had been diabetic for many years. So she had to have daily insulin injections. Oh. And I remember her struggling to inject hmm. and saying to me, can you come and help. do it? And yeah. I was, I'm not sure, you know, mm. if I can do it, sure, sure. She mm. says, no, come, I'll show you. Yeah. And she shows me what to do and how to do it. And, of course, her skin is so delicate and, and tender. And yeah. I've got to look for the vein. And if I don't find it, I've got to try again. I've got to learn how to load the insulin into the injection. And I became very adept at it. Whoa. And that ended up being a moment of sharing for the two of us where yeah. I would find her, you know, and, and inject her and, yeah. you know, for me, I carry those moments. You know, it was a responsibility, but such a blessing for mm. my life to have those moments with yeah. her. Yeah. Um, I, just taking me back to when I was a child, I yeah. remember one time I was very upset with my mother. Uh -huh. And I said, that's it, mom. I'm leaving. I think I must have been six or seven years old. So I went <laughs> to my room and I had, you know, those box bags for school. Yeah. You know, in the old days, we had yes. these young people. The boxes, yeah. Box yeah. So I went to my room, got yeah. my box bag out, put whatever I could fit into the box mm. bag, closed it, and pronounced, I am leaving the yes. house. <laughs> I had no response from my mother, who seemed totally unfazed. Yeah. So I said, okay, yeah. I am going. <laughs> I have gone, I have left the door, nothing. So I left the house, I was wondering now, looking up the hill, yeah. um, wondering now I'm, I've got to go because I've said I'm going. Yes. This is really bad. Yeah. Now what do I do? <laughs> meanwhile, you're six. Me yeah, oh. Meanwhile, I'm six, seven years old with my bag, going to the big bad world. Then I said, let me just go and tell my shosho bye. Mm. At least now, you know, so I went to my shosho. Mm. My shosho said, no, sit down. Let yeah. me give you some milk. What happened? I said, my mother did ABCD. She says, no, 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 no. You are not going anywhere. You yes. are my child. We will go and discipline your mother. Yeah. I said, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I picked up my bag, went back. My mom was compelled to apologize to her, her wayward daughter. Yeah. And, you know, it's, I think, you know, when you understand the importance of family, yeah. that's yeah. when you realize that your grandparents are so essential, mm. even in the lives of, uh, you, you know, your children, their grandchildren. Yeah. How yeah. do you keep those links alive? You don't just go and see them once in a blue moon. How do you make sure wow. that your children have time to be with them, that they know oh each my other? God. 
so that they know where they come from. Yeah. And, and they get that feeling of protection and of mm. history and heritage. Mm. And by the way, for people who don't know, yeah. because in this urban world, yeah. there are a lot of people who will be thinking, but I don't know who my grandparents yeah, are. Exactly. And find a mentor yeah. who has love in their hearts, mm. who is able to take that space. Because even you can imagine there are older people looking yeah. for that love from others. Ex exactly. So how do we as a society exactly. start to just appreciate each other more mm. and, and create those relationships. Mm. Do you think that's why there was such respect for the elderly in the beginning? Because a long time, there was such respect. If you entered a bus and there was an elderly person, you automatically stood up. You stood up and allowed them to sit down and, and, and that is the order of things. Yeah. And, you know, sadly, I think because for a while now society has been breaking down, we do see stories of elderly people yeah. hurting younger people yeah. where we have to ask ourselves what on earth is going on, yeah. but I think we start to address it together. Mm -hmm. So we use the figures and the mentors who are elderly, who are positive yeah. influences in society, and prop them up yes. and give them the respect and the love they deserve exactly. so that it showers down on the rest of us. Exactly. And, and we don't see some yeah. of the things that have been happening in society mm. happening. Uh -huh. Oh my God, me, that story of grandma is so tight. It's too much. In fact, I don't, it's like yeah. I don't even want you to live there. Yeah. Uh, so you stayed with her for a while? We stayed together. And she was instilling some beautiful things in you? For months. Yeah. And, and precious months. Yeah. Um, and then my mother came back from the U.S. Okay. So now I, I spent some time with my mother as well. Yeah. And it was just, you know, the bonding was, mm. is, is just so amazing. Mm. But then soon after that, I met my current husband. Yeah. And uh, one of the things I so loved about him mm. was when I took him home to meet my grandmother yeah. it was just watching them together yeah. and how he made her giggle like a little girl <laughs> and I had never seen Shosho <laughs> the only person who Shosho would do that was my brother who is named after her husband and she would call him my husband you know yeah. so, and I saw that bond and I saw how he cared for her and um, she got sick and she passed away. Your grandma? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, I, I thank the Lord for her. And mm. I always say to the Lord, you know, mm. you took her at your time. Wow. And so for me, yeah. it's not something I, I held on. She was old and she was, her body was tired. Mm. But in the, in, we would go and visit her in, mm. in hospital and make mm. her porridge. Yeah. And we'd go and they'd tell her she hasn't eaten anything today. She's refusing mm. food. Mm. Tony would say, really? And he'd serve the porridge. Yeah. And he'd go spoon. He'd say, shosho. I'm going to feed you. And he would feed and her. And he couldn't, ref she wouldn't refuse his yeah. food. You know, you me, I, don't, I don't even want us to talk about the husband first. I want okay, us first to... Because we are going to go there. We are going there. Okay. <laughs> we are going so, there. So yeah. We are going there. First, me, I want us to first find out who Julie is yes. and, and find out now here you are. Yes. You're working. Yes. You're earning some money. Yes. All right? Before Tony now came along, it is you and your grandmother and your mother. Yes. You know? Yes. So what's happening there? Are you still working, helping mom? Yes. Or is mom also working? Or, or what's going on as a young girl? We want, okay, let me put it this way. What I'm looking for is you, you started by saying how sometimes you'd go in, in trouble, you would not have food to yes. eat and all that. Yes. That's very powerful mm. for somebody that's watching because they know Julie as a glamorous, beautiful queen. And they cannot associate Julie with trouble. With being hungry. With being <laughs> Not hungry. knowing where the next meal is coming So I don't want us to rush from. over that. <laughs> yes. Because you see somebody is watching and they're thinking, is, are you serious? Are you talking about yourself? In, in, fact, you know? in fact, my boss at KTN, when I told him I have to go to Capital, he said, why are you so impatient? I told him, you look at me and you can't believe that. Yeah. I need help. Yeah, I need that I need, I need the money. I need yeah. to earn yeah. decent money. You think this one can do an internship for six months? I'm living with my grandmother on yeah. one year road. Yes. I don't have bus fare to enter a that's, bus. That's what I want somebody and to come hear. To your house. Yeah. Whoa. I, I don't have bus fare. Actually, one morning I didn't have bus fare. And for some funny reason, my brother, who lived in Karen, mm. who is a pilot, decided yeah. to come and pick me. And he comes and mm. he says, I thought I'd take you to work today. Yeah. And you didn't have bus fare. And I didn't have bus fare. And people morning. ask how God comes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's those interesting things yeah. that you sit back and say, look, I'm not sure mm. how this happened, but, you know. It, it so, Julie, like, yeah. you being beautiful and, 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 you know, here you are, you are a young, beautiful girl, you could have thought of other options. Because I'm sure there were men lined up looking at you and thinking, woo la la, man, I can have this all by myself. <laughs> There are always 
there are always options. Uh -huh. When you're a young single girl, yeah. there are options. When you're married, there are options. Yes. As a woman, you must decide what kind of woman you want to be. Hey. That we, can, that we cannot pass. That's, that's it. it. That's, that's it. what we are talking about. Who are you? Yes. What do you live by? Yes. There's a verse in the Bible that says, a wise woman with her own hands builds her home. A foolish one with her own hands destroys. destroys it. Yeah. And then you cry later tears and mm. you blame everybody. You blame the it's man. This you blame one, it's the, the woman, school I went to. The, yes. Yes. But, but actually sometimes, sometimes when you trace back, yeah. there are things that women do yeah. that... They destroyed know? with their own hands. So they choices made choices. Are important. Yes, uh -huh. choices are important. So we choices. All have choices. So there you're hearing. Choices are very important. She had to make choices to do the right thing as opposed to the easy things out. Mm -hmm. And you know the easy things is normally get you a sugar daddy. Mm -hmm. Why not? Never you an know? option for me. I, I, when I finished form four, mm. my dad called me. Yeah. So sit down. Yeah. I said, okay. Mm. What's going on? <laughs> What's happening? What have I done? Yeah. And he says to me, Listen, Julie, he says, you know, in our tradition, yeah. these things happen yeah. where a family has come yeah. and they've expressed their interest in you. Yes. Now, because you finished form four, yeah. I mean, there's an interest. You could well get married. Yes. You know, you could, uh, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So we have had interest from our family. Mm. We know the family. Mm. We know who they are. Yeah. We've known them for years. Yes. And you're 18. Yeah. So I'm sitting down to ask you. Yeah. Uh, Why not? Are you interested? So I looked at my dad and I said, Dad, we always agreed yeah. that I would study. And you've always known mm. I wanted to study. Mm. And he reminded me of this two years ago. You know, I had completely forgotten this. And he sat down and he told me, do you remember what you said to me? He says, you said to me, Dad, let me study. I promise you, mm. you will not regret it. I will make you proud. Oh, That's my what I said. oh my God. You see now, these are the things we would have missed. <laughs> I don't want to, oh you my forget. God. You know. Yeah, so he says, Julie, you know what you told me? You wow. said, you will not regret it. Yeah. I will make you proud. And I want to encourage fathers. Yeah. Your relationship with your daughter is pivotal towards the kind of man she will choose in her life because you are the benchmark. So you treat her like a princess and a queen so that she looks for a man who is a king in her life. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That because is awesome. When a man thinks yeah. of his daughter, do you want her yeah. to be misused by people? Yes. Abused by people? Uh -huh. No, then you treat her in such a way that she has a benchmark and a standard. And also, if you give your daughter education, you enrich not just your own family, you enrich your society. And it's generations. An, yes, yes, yeah. yes. So just even if you're doubting, you're not sure, yeah. extend yourself. Oh. Just extend yourself and oh. give her that. Oh. I, I am so thankful that my dad looked at me and he says, I will yeah. tell them, no. Oh, that's a, <laughs> oh, that's a good man. That's so, a good man. Yeah. He didn't force you into it. No. He didn't. He no. just asked you, do you want mm -hmm, it? Mm -hmm. Oh, and he went by your word. And when you went, said no, he was fine. He said, I will tell them no. End yeah. of full stop. Yeah. Never heard again. Oh. Uh, that story, yeah, that was it. Yeah, it was not repeated again. Mm. So he let you be. He let me be. Uh -huh. he, he let me fly. Yes. Fact, and you told him you're going to make him proud one I day. I told him I'll make him proud one day. And a yeah. few years ago, he said, do you know, really, that's what you said. He yeah. Because, oh. I mean, he's looking at you now and seeing what you're doing. And he's, yes. he's like, what? Yes. That's my girl. Yes. Uh -huh. so, so, so now here you are in your growing. There is that uh, season of, of issues, mm -hmm. going through issues and all. Mm -hmm. And what you're advising a girl out there is that please don't sell yourself short. Don't. Make the right choices. You know, there's, a, there's another thing that's so important. Mm. At that young age, mm. you don't realize that to choose a partner. Yeah. It's got to be about so much more than what you're doing at that time, mm. where you're going, the people you're seeing, the friends you have. Mm -hmm. You've got to have value systems that melt. Yes. And if you don't, you feel you're okay mm. for that year, the next year, the troubles will start and they will flood. They will keep flooding. So all you've done, if you go and look for a sugar daddy, or if you go and marry someone at a young age who, yeah. who God did not to rescue destined out. for you. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. First of all, you're also being unfair mm. to that person. Mm. So you also manipulate. As much as they're manipulating you. You're also manipulating them. You are also them manipulating them. Because you're running them. away from trouble. Exactly. Yeah. And you're using them uh -huh. to get you. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So the tr all you're doing is planting a, 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 
a sick tree. Yeah. Does that make sense? A lot. You're planting a seed, watering it, spending time on it, but that tree will never flourish. It will never go anywhere. It will cause you problems all your life. And when you're 30, 40, you'll be looking back, asking yourself, what happened? It's the seed that you planted. Yeah. Was the wrong seed. Wrong seed. Yeah. Bad seeds Absolutely. in your life. Yeah. Oh, my God. You know what? I believe that a young girl that's watching us is getting so educated because, you know, many of them choose the easier options and run off and do weird things. And especially... There are so many that believe, unless a man helps them, they are going nowhere in life. I mean, and the, a man has to be there. There are so many that it has to be, take a man to pay their house rent, to drive them around, to give them money, to, to, to work but, but for them. But then who then helps the man? Yeah. I mean, you've got to feel <laughs> sorry. You've got to feel sorry when you see, when you see someone as a tool for facilitating yeah. your, you know, your even trouble. you go into that relationship not understanding your role in also actualizing this person's purpose. Exactly. Because it's, it's, you're both there to support and build each other. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. Imagine, imagine a couple bringing mm. up children in an environment where that was started yeah. with that in, in such mind. a foundation. In such a foundation, that's, 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 that's horrible. Mm -hmm. You know, what I love, Julie, is that, uh, that uh, you're encouraging a person to think, to make right choices, and to walk in the right direction. And that's what you did as a young girl, and that's what has seen you this far, okay? So now you're grown up, you've told your father you don't want to get married, and he said, okay, fine. You've pushed your... You've KTN, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, is it classic? It's a citizen. citizen. Uh, it was, sorry, Capital FM. Capital, Capital yes. FM, yes. Capital. <laughs> You've moved there now. Did yes. they allow you to move? Yes. Well, they, they let me go because they, they, you know, they had to. They wouldn't go. match there. My, my boss was Isaiah Kabira, who for many years has been the head of PPS for President Mikey Baki. Yes. And I always tell people, you know, my career is, uh, I trace it very back to Isaiah yeah. and Washira Waruru, who is, of course, at Citizen today. Yeah. So Isaiah let me go. But if anybody talks to him today, he'll still say, Julie is a very impatient <laughs> girl, <Yeah>. you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, so I moved on to Capitals, mm -hmm. uh, had a career there, um, and, and that, that is the time now that I met my husband, but uh, okay. I was still a young girl determined yeah. to, to do it alone. To make it. I had younger brothers, I had a younger brother here, so mm -hmm. I was trying also to kind of oversee him, and he mm -hmm. had just finished high school, and I, you know, I, I, I think... The way I was brought up, mm. and I had two younger brothers, I, I was already very mothering <laughs> okay. from quite a young age. Yeah. So um, although I was a, a young girl in a, in a modern environment, mm. I already mentally was very motherly okay. in my approach okay. to life. Yeah, so, you were taking care of them. So I was living with my younger brother, was in, in my flat with me. I managed to, when I got a job, get a flat. And okay. we, we were together, and so I was be able to monitor okay. uh -huh. what he was doing and be the big sister. Okay. Yes. Now, yes. So this is what I'm talking about. So while you're still a young girl, you're not, mm -hmm. you have not met any man to marry you. You had your own apartment. Yes. You were yes. taking care of yourself. I got my apartment. You were fine all yes. by yourself. I was fine all by myself. Still struggling, still wasn't easy. Yeah. It's never easy to balance the books. Yeah. Eh? yeah. At the end of the month, you're <laughs> trying to tell myself, no, yeah. you can't buy that. Yeah. No, you can't have this. <laughs> Can you first get your groceries? Yeah. Yeah. And, and we make mm. mistakes. But I think as long as you're principled, mm. you, you, you know, you will make mistakes in life. Maybe you will overspend. You'll find yourself struggling to pay. Yes. Those are all natural things and yeah. that's all fine. Yeah. As long as you're not compromising your soul, mm. you are okay to deal with every other challenge. Yeah. And challenges will be there. Yeah. Yes. So is it at, at that time, uh, you said you, you gave your life to Jesus while, while you were still young. The first thing I can remember as a child is my love for God. I don't even know how to explain it. I knew he was there. I loved him. And I loved him completely. I've always loved him completely. I don't know how to explain it. Oh, my goodness. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah. So, I mean, I grew up in the church. Yeah. We used to go to uh, in uh, CBD, yeah. Holy Family Basilica. Okay. And uh, that was our church. And, and I always grew up in the Lord. But mm. somewhere deep inside there, even beyond the church and, and all that, mm. he just resides. Mm. It's just a love. I, yeah. I don't know how to... That you've always... You don't know how to explain. You just love him. <laughs> yeah, I love him. And he's there. And, and I think yeah. if each of us decides to open that door, mm. you will find it. Wow. It, it resides in here. Yeah. And you just need to 
reach out to and allow, accept it. To allow him Just to like take charge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So now you're in your own apartment. You're, you're taking care of your little brother. Yeah? We'll be right back after this break. Ladies, 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 I know a God that fulfills purpose. I know a God. You are all invited to the Daughters of Zion meeting to be held on Saturday, the 29th of June, 2013, hosted by Reverend Kathy Q. God is not moved by crowd. He's moved by individual. Ah, there is a personal God that we need to know like David. I don't care if you think I'm late. I know a God who never delays. I know a God who never discourages. Purpose to attend. Daughters of Zion, raising the standard among women. Yeah. And I want to address that. So mm -hmm. there are two things I want to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Without limits. Ooh. 